Welcome. My name is Nick Hansen. Alongside me, I have my good friend Lance Trot for part two, round one of barely a tournament, first round at Bear Mountain Disc Golf Course. I want to thank Ryan and Dale for the coverage. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah, big shout out to Dale and Ryan making that six hour round trip from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Really appreciate you coming up, filming us while we play and bringing some footage for everyone else. Coming into part two of round one, after 10 holes, we have Eagle leading the way at minus six, followed by him. I am sitting at two under. After me, we have Nick sitting at one under. Followed by him, we have Colton at two over par. So 10 holes out of 42, lots of golf still to come. Probably going to see some more scores changing, I would assume. So stay tuned for some more golf. Trifection, always try hard by Leonard Miller. For all your custom apparel needs, look for Trifection on Instagram at Trifect Your Game. T-R-I-F-E-C-T, your game. All right, Nick. Back to the action at hole 11. What do we got here? So on this hole, actually, we made a mando uh, left of the first tree, so that way you could throw the big hyzer. Um, it's a lot easier shot, I would say. To throw the hyzer, yes. Definitely. Because as you can see, it runs down the hill there. Pretty severe slope. And that tree next to the basket is... Uh, not small. Not small. Big tree. So uh, you win the forehand. Eagle's going to go with the backhand. Yeah, he's throwing his putter, the same one he's been throwing all day. Almost rings it up, but goes way past the basket. So he went between the basket and that tree, which is there's only about six to eight feet. So we thought it was going in from that tee box. It, it really looked like a good run. He was he was not wanting me to keep the box after I was razzing him. And you just send your forehand. Crushed it. Crushed your forehand. Got was that, that skip on the backside of the basket. Is that an old Star Max? Yeah, gummy Star Max. Yeah, really, really got a hold of that one. Colton going forehand as well. I think he's throwing that PD3. Which I think is the best route on this hole. I, I agree. I agree. Um, but as you can see, all of us are below the basket, which, you know, I don't see that often. Yeah, and if, if you get on that underside of that tree, uh, the branches hang down, it's a really tough putt. Whew. Man, we, I thought he made it out of his hand. You're... Just pitching up right here, right, Nick? All I'm doing is pitching up here. There's no reason to run that with, you know, trying to go around. I am running a putt and not even close. No. He didn't even get past the tree. And Colton running a putt, hits that tree. So, like I said, if you're on that under underside of that tree, it is tough. And you can just see, like, as that tree, it hangs. So, you know, it's about eye level at most parts for us. Yeah, and, I mean, no separation on this hole. All pars. Yeah, I mean, we all were on the backside of that tree, so no one really had an advantage on that hole. Um, everybody was looking at either a tough upshot or a tough run. I think the Mando was well-placed and well-used on that one to take the hyzer away. Definitely with the wind we had today, you wouldn't be able to be on the left side of the basket easily for, you know, 25 to 35-foot putt. And, you know, we took that away, and look what happened. So, and before we teed off on this one, uh, it was a joke, but we all said we had to throw a putter. So here I am throwing an AVR X3, probably my one of my most dependable discs in my bag nowadays, I'd say. Definitely, you throw that disc a lot. I think Eagle is going with the uh, Link. That same putter he's been throwing, it's a premium pa plastic Link, so it holds more stability than the D-line runs, I'd say. He throws that thing so well, though. And you're throwing uh, putter as well. Yep, uh, P2. Right at the basket, a little, little fade. Yeah, you know, um, definitely trying to run this one. I mean, you're uphill, um, it's wide open. Yeah, I played a practice round out here with Colton and Kona uh, two weeks prior to this. We've been trying to get this going, and just schedules haven't worked out. And This was our last hole, and Colton rang up an ace to leave the course, so it was pretty cool to see. Yeah, you know, walking off the course uh, from the tee box is That's fun. special. That's fun. You don't do that very often. We're looking at it. I, we're all pretty close. Maybe our first star frame. Definitely. Because Colton's parked right there next to the basket. Eagle, this is almost a no doubt. I think he closed his eyes at this point. I agree. And we're we're getting the first star frame. Star so frame. Putter uh, only hole. 12, 12 holes in, and we're finding a star frame. You know, it shows the ability for separation, even though these holes are short. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we got... 
three out of the four players under par, and Colton charging to get back under. Eagles got a four-stroke lead, and we're on to hole 13, which plays as a, I would say, a, one of the longer holes, a, a dump hyzer shot for most of us. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's probably, yep, 351 is the hole distance. Um, you know, I'm just trying to throw a hyzer out to the, to the right. Um, something that's going to push down because it is a little bit downhill, and we have that, you know, right to left wind. And so I throw mine just a little bit left, but pin high. Uh, I throw that real overstable disc again just to try to fight the wind that we have. Eagle's throwing his razor claw, which is, you know, he's just kind of teasing us here with his distance. Yeah, I don't even know if he uh, needed to bring the bag today. He probably could have just brought three discs. And you come out, hyzered. Oh, and you, you're putting it a little closer than I did. Yeah, top side of the basket, uh, where I want to be, you know, probably about circle's edge. Colton throwing his PD3 again. And he's a little bit long on the basket. That's a big bounce, though. That was, a, that was an interesting bounce. I'll tell you what, Nick, I was not sure how to run this putt because of the wind. and I So threw did it. you run it, or did you just kind of throw it? I throw the upshot. I would say that was a run that was committed, maybe a little overcommitted. Gotcha. Well, and I'm leaving myself a tester coming back. Eagle, very encumbered putt there. Yeah, the wind's definitely picking up here. Um, both of them were outside the circle. Ugh. Even myself, um, right at the circle's edge, you know. But it's getting tough up here on the mountain. I think that wind just took it out of your hand straight down, though. I mean, that's what it looked like. Yeah, it was nosed out on the hand, so with the wind as it is, is I didn't have a chance at that putt. Yeah, and I'm pretty stoked about my par putt there. Moving on, and I think I'm going to keep the box again. Definitely. I'm really teasing you guys after this one, I know that. <laughs> you have been holding it, um, definitely. I think we were giving you some grief about it, too. So. For sure, for sure. I mean, we're all pretty good friends, so it's, it's fun. And Nick, not happy about that miss. No, you could definitely see me tapping that one in for three was not uh, enjoyable. I was hoping to get one back on Eagle there. Happy Dale caught that little smile from him there. <laughs> All right, so this is one of my favorite holes on the course. Um, it's just a wide open shot, but it is so fun. This is the most fun hole to throw. All your discs in your bag. I don't care. I've lost several, but you always get them back up here at Dan's place because it's a private location. We had a really hard headwind here, and I go with an 11 time Firebird. Just a little short. Yeah, probably about 40. 40 out, yeah, I'd say. But not a bad shot. You're definitely looking up hot there. Yeah, I didn't get tucked in between the Aspens or anything, so I still have a look at the basket. And Eagle throws it. That was a great shot, but it bounced a little right. He's uh, still going to have a putt, though. I'm guessing that was probably a PD that he yeah, threw there. Something like that. And you're throwing. Uh, faster disc than I Glow threw, Destroyer. Right? Okay, so you got a nice read off of me and threw it a little bit better, oh, I would say. Right right, right next to the basket. Nice shot, Nick. Right there. That's what you're looking for on a day like today with this one. And Colton going with that PD3 again. Really trusting that disc. He's throwing it a lot in the wind. You can tell that it's... Oh, man, what a bounce. <laughs> what a kick. You can tell that disc is really overstable, too. Way overstable. I just uh, threw a layup, I'd say. I guess. <laughs> Didn't give it a chance, bud. <laughs> I mean, we're going to move on, and I'm going to give up the box, but I'm not ashamed. Not ashamed. You held it for a while. That was a good run you had there. We're going to tap in a couple birdies here, which is... Man, and I'm hurting the star frame. What a letdown. Great drive, Nick, there. This would have been quite the star frame, I would say, Lance. Yeah, with this wind and all of us getting it would have been an impressive feat. So now we're... Uh, all even par or better. So it's been a battle. We're 14 holes in. Yep. And Eagle has a five-stroke lead over Nick and myself. Eight over Colton. Yep. Um, it's actually a fun battle. Yeah, shout out to Triple Play again. Great guys out there in Western Slope of Colorado. They can hook you up with discs, bags, 
uh, vinyl records, uh, tapestries, anything, you know, all kinds of fun stuff at Triple Play Records. So here we have a hole that... One of the best holes in Colorado. We don't, we don't have these kind of holes in Colorado, really. We don't. And to get to play this is, is a blast. And probably, I would say, my favorite hole in the entire state. And you grip it a little. Yeah, I definitely was trying to get a hold of it off to the right of the fairway there. So, Dan, in the past, this used to be uh, about 120 feet shorter, I would say, where m- most players of our caliber would be throwing a mid-range or a putter, and he moved it a lot longer to make it more of a fairway shot. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, and you guys are giving me a hard time there. Lance, wow, when it rolls into the fairway for you. Ooh, and I yank it again. Two in a row. Two in a row, and I get a lucky roll out again. Wow. Really showing this hole who's boss. You can see I'm in there thick, too. Ugh. Man, at least you kicked out, though. But you're still 300 feet away from the basket. So far. So far. And it's a hard shot down this. I mean, it's 20 feet. I just saw from that left, one off. 20 feet from left to right, maybe 30 Yeah, feet. it's a tight fairway. That's why I love this hole so much. It's so hard, but it's so rewarding when you get all the way down the hill. And this was a – I mean, that tree was helpful for me, but I threw a really good shot with Definitely. that AVR X3 there. Colton has a great drive. And yeah, the wind just knocked his down, or, you know, he, might, he would have been up there putting. And this is you for your four. Wow, it's just – Tough hole, like we said. You don't, you don't see yeah, this. Yeah, you know, I'm back and forth across the fairway there, just trying to get, just trying to get, get out of this one at this point. Oh, and Eagle gets almost all the way down the fairway and hits, he sh- hits right away. He shows he's human again. Yeah, there's some, there's some human ability in there. Oh my god, man, we thought he made it too. So Eagle's gonna uh, take a, a bogey here, a four. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily call it a bogey for this hole, but. We're playing everything in part threes here today. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it could. you could consider this one a four, probably. A three is super rewarding. A, a two definitely feels like an eagle. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. But, yeah, everything is a three. Yeah, I mean, I'm tapping in for double bogey here. Um, and not that mad about it. No, that fourth shot you threw was really good. And, so, and you had a good putt. A couple plinkos, but we're in for a five. We only have one three on that hole, too. And Colton's going to take the box for the first time since hole one. So, boy, Colt. And, uh, yeah, we gave some strokes back there. Yeah, we went three, four, four, five. Um, so, tough hole there. Yeah, Colton, clear, like clearly. I would say, I think it's a par four. Um, so, on to the next. Um, I like this hole. It's a little bit of one of those holes you think you should get, but it's definitely... Not the easiest hole in the course. Yeah, I mean, you look at that right side, and it is super tight if you hit early on the right. And it's downhill the whole way, so your disc can go way past the basket if you put too much on it. Yep. But you have a great line on the left side. Wide open. If you can then turn it over to the very end, you get rewarded. And look at this. Oh, Oh, man. Wow. You can see the wind really playing with his disc on that one. Yeah, it's definitely starting to gust. Yeah, and I'm, we're throwing putters here because, I, I mean, it's downhill and we can all reach the basket with a putter. Yeah, and I mean, if you get a hold of anything else, you're going to be looking at probably something that's going to go far left if it doesn't hit anything. And if you go too deep on this, it comes off the property and I would say it plays out of bounds. I've never seen anyone make it there, but no, I'm sure it, I'm sure it's happened when I haven't been at the course. So you hit early, but you still had a look at the basket, but you're probably 80 feet out. Yeah, I'll take that tree hit to sit it down next to the basket for me. You know, a little luck never hurt anyone. Nobody. That's my uh, Mentos AVR, you know, the fresh maker I love. Just floats down there nice. Oh. Man, Cole, that was a great looking putt there, too. The baskets have not been enjoyable to him today so far. They're just not catching his putts. No, he's definitely there. He's not that far off at all. No. I mean, an inch, two inches, and, you know, it, for me, they might catch. For you, they might catch. And him for the same putt, they're just not catching right now. No. You know, it just happens like that sometimes. That's why it's disc golf, you know. Hey, Colton, thanks for the etiquette there. And uh, 
staying still while I'm putting. I appreciate it. Yeah, you think you would have missed that 12-footer if you would have been moving? You know, I, I have a hard time focusing sometimes on those short ones, and a little lack of concentration, you miss. You sure do. So we're going to be tapping out no birdies here. No birdies. On a hole that we expect to see a couple birdies. Definitely. You know, the wind was ripping at this point, I would say, in the day. Uh, we're looking at 25 to 35 at least 25 mile an hour wind right now and it's not slowing down anytime soon no and so it's it's gonna be a battle i mean eagle's got uh i think six strokes maybe five on us i think he's got five on me and six on you and we're looking this is a this is a must get birdie here on this course if i can say so myself it's uphill we're all throwing Touch putter shots. Yeah, at 167, like... Plays about 200, I would say, with the incline. Eagle showing us how it's done. Yeah, right to the pin. Hey, guys, just do it like this. Yep. Watch me. I'm trying to imitate him. It's kind of hard for me. You're going to be up there for a putt. A little too much turnover. Nothing wrong with that, though, up there, pin high. No, nothing wrong with that. And you come out just a little right as well, but nothing wrong with that either. Nope. Uh, inside 20 feet, I would say. Yeah. Colton's out, and he's maybe 30 feet out. Oh, man. And the baskets, just like we said, they're just not treating him well. I was teasing him. I told him he needed more finesse, but his putts don't look that hard. They're not that hard, and they're definitely putts that I think should catch up. And say. see, I'm picking up his par because that's definitely a gimme in my book. See, mine was high and outside there, and it stuck. So yeah. Maybe that's the sweet spot. Maybe. Um, these I are, could just be getting lucky today also. These are uh, pretty unique baskets. They got cool number plates on them. And they're aesthetically pleasing, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Um, so... Like we were talking about, Eagle is up five on Lance. He's got Lance has me by one, and then uh, Colton is at even there, um, eight back from Eagle. So we got probably the most difficult hole on the course coming up right now, next to next to that tunnel shot, I would say. Definitely um, uphill, small fairway, low ceiling, rough is rough on both sides, and. The baskets? Oh, man, that wow, was looking that's, good. That's tough being down there, though. It's and like, that is a, it's a bad boy. kick. It's almost a guaranteed bogey from that side on the left, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Here I am. I'm just throwing a leopard, trying to have a little turn on it. And I don't, I'm don't. i not mad at that shot at all. I'm, I'm 50 feet from the basket. Yeah, pitch up, take your three. Pitch up and move on. And you're throwing forehand as well. Four, four. So, I hit that same tree that Eagle hit. Same tree, and you're going to be in a tough spot probably. Directly left. In my opinion, bogey at best from down there. It's tough. Yeah. Colton, just a little low on his shot, but nothing wrong with being in the middle of the fairway. Oh, and you catch a, you catch a branch right away, right, off that throw? No, I was probably about three-quarters from the basket from my throw there, but... Yeah, definitely caught something. I'm probably looking at, you know, 75-footer. Eagle throws a Scooby Tomahawk to give himself a 60-foot death putt, I would say. Yeah, he's up there for a putt, but uh, I think he's probably going to lay that one up. I'm laying it up, but he's obviously a little higher caliber putter, I would say. Yeah, so... So we'll see. Mine actually rolled here, so I was probably about 100. Yeah. And just pitching up there to hopefully get a bogey. Yeah, and, and a bogey's not... a bad score on this hole I did see this hole aced before which was incredible oh my goodness Wow! downhill right to putt. left wind wow great putt eagle great great putt I was so impressed watching that I definitely was thinking I was picking up a stroke. ice in his veins on that one oh, you had a great putt there too to save your bogey I mean that as was you no guys gimme. can see behind that basket it runs away and Colton 20 feet away looking at a par Man, the basket caught his putt for once. Atta boy. Yep. You got to catch one sooner or later. Yep. And here I am. I just pitched it up and taking my par moving on. Hey, man. 
It's a good score on this hole today. Yeah, pretty good score. I honestly was, was pretty surprised I didn't pick up a stroke on Eagle there, though. I mean, what a putt. I mean, you would think you would yeah, with him being all the way down there. Kind of demoralizing, you know, when you're playing against someone and they just don't give anything up. Scramble like crazy. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy. Once again, thank you, Grip, for sponsoring us. Uh, we really appreciate you coming on board. Yeah, I mean, clearly we uh, enjoy your product as all four of us are rocking the Grip bag today. Definitely the best bag in disc golf. Best bag in disc golf. Shout out to Eagle for always taking care of his friend here and helping me out with a Grip bag if I need to buy one from him. Here and there. I bet. appreciate you, Eagle. So he threw the grenade there. I actually... We walked to this tee pad. He goes, what do I throw? I said, you need to throw the grenade here. And here I am. I'm hitting the tree right next to the basket and sitting right next to it. And this is this is when the wind has picked up to its highest level, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Colton throwing the PD3. Gives himself like 35 feet to the basket uphill. And we are contemplating what shot to throw. And Nick has, in practice, thrown this shot really close. And... I'd say he just juiced it a little bit there if I was commentating on myself there. I'd yeah, I throw the skip shot there. It's worked out well, but I just missed the hill completely. So, it, you know, threw it about 100 deep. 100 deep, and that, you know, you can see with that upshot, that wind just grabbed the disc here. Colton, right before this putt, I said, hey, buddy, why don't you make a good one? Sure enough, great putt, Colton. I think, that's the, I think we saw that run a couple times somewhere else. You yeah. remember? I think uh, when he was making equal putts at and, Waco. Yeah. And winning a Disc Golf Pro Tour event. That might have been it. That was one of my favorite things I've ever watched in Disc Golf. Oh, an Eagle McMahon. That's not the birdie putt he wants to miss. That's not what we'd like to see in that Eagle. I'm going to tap in for bogey here after, you know, real, stumbling out of the woods. A real disappointing bogey on an under 200-foot hole. Definitely. Not what we're looking for here. I'm You're not looking to overthrow a 200-foot hole by 120 feet, Lance. And with this wind picking up, I'm pretty stoked about a two. Yeah, a, you a drop in two. Right next to the basket. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to go back to even. Uh, Colton's at one down. Eagle is at eight under par, and Lance is at four under par. Um, so everybody's still there. Um, Colton and myself battling. You're in the middle. You know, We're all just, it seems like, fighting for second place at this point. Yeah, we're all just enamored by Eagle's abilities and just watching his skills. So this hole is one of my favorites that's not a regular course hole. Um, it's a harder, challenging uphill turnover shot, and you can see Dan has uh, campgrounds on his property as well. So if you want to come up and camp with your family for the weekend, play disc golf. It's, I believe, it's twenty-five dollars a night, and there's this is a, you'll never see disc golfers besides us next to this hole. There's Dan in the background there, walking with us. We love seeing Dan out strolling with us you know yeah this is one of my uh favorite holes in the course as you can tell we're playing through a campsite but one of those holes on the backside that if you know about it you gotta play it you gotta play it if you know about it and i don't know us locals the eagle and colton have never seen this hole so it's cool to have them out there an eagle hit early and he's really in a tough spot I'm going to throw up there, just trying to get my three. Take your par and move on. And see, we got another uh, mountain dog there in Bailey. Oh, my goodness. Wow, Eagle. I mean, that had to have been 90 feet. So the dog was kind of teasing me there, getting in my line of sight, I'd say. Oh, we got him walking over to the right. That's you know, cool. the disc golf doggos. Got to love the dogs. Sometimes they bring you good luck, like that one, Lance. Yep, that dog uh, made me... Focus and calm down a little bit. Take my time. Make my putt. Colton here uh, banging a birdie. I like seeing his putt stick. I love seeing Colton make putts. He's, he's hit the basket a lot today. He's such a good putter, too. It's you know just a matter of time before they start falling. Definitely. He's got to keep doing the same stroke over and over. And, you know, there I was thinking after Eagle's first and second shot, I might get two on him. And he makes that 90-foot putt for his par save to just make me rethink my abilities. Yeah, you're thinking you're gonna you're gonna gain a couple back and maybe have a chance, and he bangs one from down the fairway. 
Yep, that's that's eagle for you. And uh, we're on to our final hole here of this round. Hole 21. And I just smashed it for no reason. Way, way over -thrown. As you can see, another campsite another camp on the property. Here. Got a couple tees by that campsite too, so it's pretty cool. And shout out again to our sponsors, uh, Grip, Trifection, Triple Play Records, and Gazebo Disc Golf. We, you know, without you guys, we wouldn't have had as much fun. I would say. I mean, it, this was a great day. Definitely. Uh, Bringing some spotlight to Dan's beautiful course is really what uh, my goal was. I met with him a few weeks ago and said, you know, did you see the avocado open by Paige and Nate? And he said, no, but I'll check it out. And told me right away, let's do it. And here we are. Stoked to get in this round at Bear Mountain. Yeah, definitely uh, one of the better courses in Colorado, I'd say. Yeah, a lot of fun. And so this hole says 215 in the corner. It's really playing about 340, I would say. I don't think it's... And they... <laughs> See there, you I wanted that I one. really wanted that putt because they were teasing me about being out of bounds. And I thought I made it out of my hand. And I uh, had the camera in right behind me. And got a good laugh out of it. We were definitely teasing him about being in that campground, calling it out of bounds. And uh, Colton looking for a two here. Finish out the day. Finish out the round, excuse me. Oh, man. That right side and out. I mean, he was outside, but one of those has got to stick once in a while. And Air Ball City from Air the Mail on the last hole of Bear Mountain Lands. Lance to finish out with a nice bogey. Um, Ew is all I could say gross. after that putt. Yeah, I mean, you put a good round together, and then a bogey the last hole is not what you're looking for. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to compete with you guys out here, and I threw three or four air balls that just didn't help my cause. You know, the wind was definitely a factor. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily a factor on that air ball. But I, can't bl I can't blame the wind on that. Definitely that a factor um, on the course today. So... After round one, Eagle in the lead at 800 par, Lance is at 400 par, Colton is at 200 par, and myself at even. That is going to conclude our round at Bear Mountain. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching, and we thank everybody. Yeah, thanks, Dan, for having us out there. Dale and Ryan, appreciate you. We'll see you in round two.